We made this trip every year, a family tradition. It was also around the time of the year when nature is in full bloom. Spring was turning to summer, and the temperature was as inviting as ever. A clear, bright sky crowned the Apostle Islands in Wisconsin as we, a group of ten, arrived at our family cabin. This cabin was our family's special getaway, a place where we broke free from the noise of everyday life and reconnected. Those trips to the cabin were some of my best childhood memories. I remember the s'mores, the campfire songs, and Grandpa's wild stories. They made the cabin feel magical. This particular year was no different. It was an eight-hour drive from our house in Milwaukee, but always worth it. As we rolled down the gravel road leading to our cabin, I envisioned the fun-filled times that lay ahead. Upon our arrival, the true beauty of this homestead always left us in awe. The cabin overlooked Lake Superior, and the Apostle Islands were tucked away in the distance. The site was a perfect muse for anyone seeking inspiration. As the day unfolded, we engaged ourselves in various outdoor activities. We felt Mother Nature's presence through a breathtaking hike, followed by a cookout, and later, some fishing by the shoreline. I loved the cool breeze and the challenge of fishing. As the day ended, everyone slowly drifted off to their beds, leaving me as the sole night owl, which was customary. I always enjoyed the quieter parts of the day, especially when moonlight was the only light. I positioned my reclining chair to face the lake, planning to do some stargazing. The moon was full that night and reflected brilliantly on the otherwise dark lake. Everything was peaceful and quiet, just as I liked it. Little did I know, things were about to take a turn into the surprising and nerve-wracking. Suddenly, my gaze was drawn to a dark figure near the shoreline. I squinted, trying to make out the shape, assuming my eyes were playing tricks on me or that it may have been one of my cousins taking a late night stroll. But as I continued to focus, I realized this was not any of my family members. There was something peculiar about its outline that set a chill racing down my spine. What stood there was a creature, around five feet tall, silhouetted against the moonlit water. I blinked in disbelief, rubbed my eyes. But when I looked again, it was still there, unchanging. My heart pounded in my chest, sending a throbbing echo through the stillness. Its wings, folded against its body, were like a bat's but bigger and seemed to be covered in black feathers. It had a human-like stature but seemed distorted, like a chilling caricature drawn out of a nightmare. Its face, the mere thought of it sends shivers down my spine even today. There was a blankness to it, no discernible features whatsoever save for two gigantic, highly reflective red eyes. They seemed to glow against the moonlight, emotionless and piercing. It stood there, not moving, its eyes never leaving me. I was so scared, I couldn't move, my breathing uneven. Exactly how long was it there, I have no idea. But eventually the figure unfurled its massive wings and took off from the shoreline, disappearing into the night sky with an eerie grace. I let out a scared whimper, jumped up and ran back to the cabin. I remember being very grateful that day that our cabin had a sturdy lock. The following day I returned to the very spot I saw it, half hoping I would find evidence to prove I wasn't hallucinating, but there was none. With no physical proof of what I had allegedly witnessed, my encounter was met with skeptical smiles and gentle teasing from my family. It was only many years later, upon reading of an eerily similar account of a creature known as the Mothman, did I feel a strange relief wash over me. To this day, those glowing eyes still visit me in my dreams, serving as a chilling reminder of that encounter. On retrospect, despite the horror and shock, I can't help but feel a deep-seated fascination about that night. The fact that I may have encountered something so unusual, so otherworldly, it brought in the realness of all Grandpa's legendary tales. With every visit to that cabin, I find myself looking at that shoreline, and though a part of me wishes never to see that silhouette again, another part wonders, what if? Every calm night spent at the cabin now carries with it an undercurrent of thrill and anticipation. Anticipation of another encounter with the Mothman. Despite the scare, that memory made me think about things beyond the normal. 
What was initially a family retreat spot turned into a personal quest of unraveling the mysteries of the Mothman. I guess that that night completely altered the way I looked at those retreats to the cabin. I guess what I'm trying to say is, there's more out there than what we see or believe. Encounters like these, rare and baffling, opens us up to that world. It reminds us of the innumerable mysteries that surround us, and in the process, introduces us to a reality that is at once convincing as it is thrilling. You won't believe what happened to me the other night. I still get chills thinking about it. So, I was up in Northern California, in Redwood National Park. You know, where the trees are so big, you feel like an ant walking among them. It was late, around midnight, and I was driving back to my campsite after a day of hiking and taking photos. The road through the park is narrow and winding, and there's barely any light except for what your headlights throw in front of you. I had the windows down a bit, enjoying that cool, earthy smell of the forest at night. Anyway, I'm driving along, listening to some low-key music, when suddenly, I see this bright light up ahead. Not like a flashlight or a car light, but brighter and kind of pulsating. At first, I thought maybe it was someone with one of those fancy drones, but it was way too big for that, and it was just hovering there right above the treetops. I slowed down, trying to get a better look, and that's when things got really weird. The light started moving, but not like anything I've ever seen. It was smooth and fast, darting between the trees like it was nothing. I stopped the car just in case, you know. Didn't want to end up smacking into a tree because I was staring at some weird light. So, there I am, parked in the middle of this forest road, watching this light zip around. And then, it stops, just like that. And it starts descending slowly, right into a clearing not far from the road. I'm sitting there, heart pounding, not sure if I should drive away or go check it out. You know me, curiosity always wins. I grab my flashlight and my phone, and I start walking toward the clearing. The air felt different, kind of electric, and there was this low humming sound coming from the direction of the light. As I get closer, I see it's not just a light, it's I don't even know how to describe it. It was like a craft, but not like any aircraft we have. It was smooth, metallic, with lights running along its sides, and it was just hovering there, a few feet off the ground. And then, this is where it gets crazy. The craft, it opens up, like a part of it just slides away. And there's this figure standing there. It wasn't human, I can tell you that. Tall, way taller than any person, with this slender body and long limbs. Its skin was like this shimmery silver, and its eyes, man, its eyes were large and black, like two pools of oil. It just stood there looking at me, and I swear I felt like it was looking right into me, you know? Not just at me, but into me. I couldn't move, couldn't speak. I was just frozen there, staring at this alien, I guess you'd call it. My mind was racing, trying to make sense of what I was seeing. Obviously, this wasn't something you prepare for. You hear stories, see movies, but when you're standing there, face to face with something that's supposed to be science fiction, well, it's a whole different ball game. The creature, this alien, didn't make any sudden moves. It just stood there observing me as much as I was observing it. The air around us was thick with this unspoken tension. You could almost feel the weight of this moment. Two beings from different worlds, just trying to figure each other out. After a few moments, it raised one of its long, slender arms, and I swear it was like it was reaching out to me. Not in a threatening way, but almost, I don't know, inquisitively. My heart was pounding out of my chest, but something inside me, call it stupidity or bravery, made me take a step forward. I was careful, slow, not wanting to spook it or anything. As I got closer, I noticed more details. Its skin wasn't just silver. It had this subtle glow, like moonlight reflected on water. And its eyes, they weren't just black. There were colors in there, shifting and changing, like looking into a galaxy. It's hard to explain, but it was mesmerizing. I stopped just a few feet away from it. We were close enough that I could have reached out and touched it, but I didn't dare. That's when I noticed something else. 
something that sent shivers down my spine. It wasn't speaking, but I was hearing something, like whispers, but inside my head. I know it sounds crazy, but it was like it was trying to communicate with me, telepathically or something. The whispers were jumbled at first, like tuning a radio, but then I started to make out words, or at least the essence of words. It was conveying feelings more than direct speech, curiosity, confusion, and something like amazement. It was as if this creature was experiencing our world for the first time, through me. I don't know how long we stood there, exchanging these unspoken words. Time seemed to stand still in that clearing. But then, as suddenly as it all began, the moment was broken. A sound in the distance, maybe a car engine or an animal, startled me, and I blinked. When I looked back at the alien, the connection was gone. It slowly lowered its arm and turned back towards its craft. The craft's lights brightened, and that humming sound increased in intensity. I took a few steps back, instinctively knowing that it was about to leave. The alien paused at the entrance of the craft, looking back at me one last time. There was no expression I could read, but I felt this sense of, I don't know, farewell? Maybe gratitude? It's hard to put into words. Then, with a grace that defied its size, the craft lifted off the ground, the light around it pulsing. In a flash, it shot up into the night sky leaving behind a trail of light that faded as quickly as it appeared. I stood there in the clearing, alone now, staring up at the sky where the craft had disappeared. My mind was a whirlwind of emotions, awe, fear, excitement, disbelief. I mean, how do you even begin to process an encounter like that? The next day, after the encounter, I woke up at my campsite feeling different. It wasn't just the lack of sleep or the adrenaline hangover from what I'd seen. There was this feeling inside me, like something had changed. I can't explain it, but it was like I was more aware, more attuned to everything around me. I tried to go about my day like nothing happened. I did some more hiking, took photos, but my mind kept drifting back to the encounter. Every shadow in the trees, every rustle of leaves made me think of the alien. I was half expecting, half hoping it would show up again, but it didn't. As night fell, I found myself drawn back to the clearing where I'd seen the craft. I don't know what I was expecting to find there. Maybe some clue that it wasn't just a dream. The clearing was empty, of course. Just the moonlight and the shadows of the trees. I sat there for hours, just thinking, trying to make sense of it all. That's when I noticed something strange. My phone, which I'd been using to take notes and record my thoughts, was acting up. It was like it was picking up interference but there was no signal out there. And then I started hearing those whispers again, like the night before. But this time they were clearer, more distinct. It was like the alien was still communicating with me, but from far away. The whispers were fragmented, but I could make out bits and pieces. Warnings about something coming, something about a convergence and the need for understanding, for connection. I know how this sounds, man, like some sci-fi conspiracy theory but I swear it was real. I felt it, heard it. It was like the encounter had opened up something in me, some channel of communication. The whispers faded eventually, and I was left there, alone with my thoughts. I didn't sleep that night, just lay there under the stars, thinking about what it all meant. The next morning, I packed up and headed home. I couldn't stay out there anymore, not with all these questions and no answers. The drive back was a blur, my mind elsewhere. I've been trying to make sense of it all ever since. Researching UFO sightings, alien encounters, trying to find someone else who's experienced something like this. But nothing quite fits what I saw, what I felt. It's changed me, this encounter. I see the world differently now. I feel more connected to everything, more aware of the bigger picture. And those whispers, they come and go, always hinting at something more, something just beyond my understanding. So, there you have it, my encounter with the unknown. You can believe it or not, I don't blame you either way. It's a lot to take in, but it happened and it's changed me, for better or worse. It was the start of the shoulder season, 
late September, when the nights in Glacier National Park turn frosty and the tourists thin out. I'm the ranger who does the night patrol, something most of my buddies dread, but I actually like being alone out there. You might find it eerie, but there's something special about the park under the moonlight, all quiet and vast. All you can hear is the wild sounds of Montana, no cars or anything. That night, the moon was so bright it lit up the whole valley. The cliffs and trees looked like black and white pictures, and the stars were all blurry, making it feel kind of surreal. I was driving my patrol truck along the Going to the Sun Road, a terrain that feels like an entirely different world after sundown. Sure, it can be dangerous, but that just goes with the territory. Part of my duty includes monitoring the wildlife, so spotting a coyote on the periphery or an owl hooting from the darkened woods was the norm. Sometimes I have to handle people who crowd the campgrounds or go for moonlit hikes without being ready for it. That night though, everything felt oddly still, like the calm before the storm. After doing a full circle, I stopped around Bowman Lake, a corner of the park where campsites tend to be isolated, but attract some daredevil campers for the same reason. I turned off the engine and just sat there listening. All I could hear was the soft whisper of the wind, the distant crash of the waves, and an occasional rustling in the woods, probably a nocturnal critter going about its business. I was about to call into the station and report all clear, when something felt off. First, it was this weird smell, earthy and kind of rotten. My first thought was a dead animal. It is part and parcel of life in wilderness. But this smell, it made me really uneasy. A dense unease settled in my gut. Then came the sounds, a soft shuffling in the underbrush, like the quiet footstep of something not quite human. It was followed by a noise that really freaked me out. It was a laugh or maybe a cackle, quite unlike anything I've heard during my years patrolling these woods. It was creepy, like a cold laugh that cut through the night's silence. I grabbed my flashlight and my sidearm, looking into the pitch black woods. But nothing appeared in the beam of my flashlight. The forest was dead silent. It was like time stopped for a second, and the silence was almost as loud as that weird laugh. Every instinct in my body screamed to leave this place, to seek out the comforting humdrum of the crowd. But I'm a ranger, and this is my job, so I had to check it out. I kept walking deeper into the woods, wondering what was behind that creepy laughter. And so, I ventured deeper into Glacier National Park, under the ghostly moonlight. With every step, I felt more like someone or something was watching me. Then I heard it. A voice I knew, calling my name. It was Jim, my partner ranger on the east side of the park. But something was off. His voice was weird, almost like a whisper, both far away and close at the same time. I sat still, straining my eyes into the darkness, my heart pounding in my chest. The voice comes again, so eerily like Jim's, and this time it's from behind me, closer. I was scared standing up and shining my flashlight around, looking for anything. Another call from the direction of the lake, where I was originally heading. I started freaking out, wondering how I could hear Jim's voice from two places at once. With shaking hands, I grasped my radio, and against every gut instinct telling me otherwise, begin my slow journey towards the voice coming from the lake. I couldn't make sense of anything. Every little sound, every leaf rustling or animal noise, just made me more scared. As I was nearing the lake, my radio crackles to life and almost gives me a heart attack. It's Jim's voice, his real voice, clear and loud from the east side checkpoint, miles away. All clear on this end, he reports. A knot tightened in my stomach as reality crashed down on me. If Jim is miles away, who or what is trying to lure me deeper into the woods? I was terrified and just ran back to my truck as fast as I could. I hopped in and slammed the door shut, my heart pounding in my throat. Swiftly, I steer the truck back down the route I came, but I can't shake off the feeling of unseen eyes burning into the back of my head. Whatever it was, was still watching me. I knew it, 100%. Later at the ranger station, Jim told tales of old Native American legends, stories of creatures that could mimic voices, shape shift, and control minds. 
He called it a skinwalker. For the first time, I'm seriously considering the possibility. How else can I explain the almost supernatural events of that night? The national park now feels different. The solitude I used to crave now seems intimidating. I've seen a different side of nature, wild and maybe even dangerous. Now every night patrol since then has been a battle with fear. Every rustle in the bushes, every flickering shadow feels like a prelude to another spine-chilling encounter. But as long as there are people in the park, somebody has to keep them safe. I guess the chilling encounter served as a raw reminder of this nerve-wracking aspect of the job, but I still love how wild and beautiful the park is. I've simply learned a greater respect for the mysterious forces lurking in the wilderness. Hi there, my name is Mike, and this all happened to me up in Kootenay National Park in Canada. Have you heard of it? It's in the eastern part of British Columbia, about 30 minutes or so west of Banff. Anyway, it has massive forests and mountains, and it's the kind of place where you can really lose yourself or find something you aren't looking for. So I'm out there doing a bit of hiking, a bit of camping, just me in the great outdoors. I've been doing this sort of thing for as long as I can remember. I set up camp near Marble Canyon. It's a gorgeous place if you ever get the chance to get there. The first couple of days were just the usual hiking, cooking some basic grub, trying to get some decent photos with my cannon. Now I've heard stories for sure about Bigfoot, Sasquatch, whatever you want to call it, but I never paid them much mind. But this one night, things got weird and I think I saw a real one. It was late, real late. The fire was down to embers. I was about to turn in when I heard this noise, not your usual forest noise. This was heavy like something big moving through the trees. I figured maybe a bear or a moose, but it didn't feel right. There was a kind of rhythm to it, almost like footsteps. I grabbed my flashlight, and man, I wish I hadn't. The beam cut through the darkness, and that's when I saw it. This thing, this creature, it was huge, covered in hair, standing on two legs, just at the edge of the trees. Its eyes caught the light shining back at me. I've seen bears before, but this was no bear. I was just staring at this thing, and it is staring back at me. We must have been like that for eons. And then it made this sound, but it wasn't aggressive, more like curious, I would say. So there I was, heart pounding like crazy, flashlight shaking in my hand. I had just seen something that, well, it just didn't fit with anything I knew about the woods. I kept the flashlight trained on the trees where I'd seen the creature, hoping maybe it'd come back, but nothing, just shadows and the odd flicker of light on leaves. I was starting to doubt myself, thinking maybe my mind was playing tricks. Too many campfire stories in my memory bank, but then I heard it again. That sound, like heavy steps, but this time it was moving around the camp. Not fast, but deliberate, like it was, circling me. My instincts were screaming to get out of there, but I was rooted to the spot. I called out, not sure why. Maybe I hoped it was someone messing with me, though deep down, I knew it wasn't. No reply, just the sound of those steps moving in the dark. Then, as quick as it started, it stopped. Everything went silent again. I waited not daring to move until daylight hit. The light made the forest seem normal again, like the whole thing had been a bad dream, but I knew it wasn't. The ground around my camp was all churned up, huge footprints everywhere, and they were fresh. Now I've done my share of tracking. I can tell deer prints from bear prints, but these indescribable, too big for a bear, and the stride was all wrong. They were like, well, human, but huge, like something out of a storybook. I followed them for a while, curious despite myself. They led deeper into the woods, away from the trails and any paths I knew. Every step took me further from where I was supposed to be, but I couldn't help it. I needed to see, to understand. The prince led to a clearing, and that's where I found it. Not the creature, but something else. A kind of shelter, I guess. Big, made of branches and foliage like nothing I've ever seen. It was too deliberate to be natural, too well made. I got this feeling, you know, 
like I was being watched, like I'd found something I wasn't supposed to. I didn't stay long, took a few photos, then got out of there. The whole way back to camp, I felt like something was following me. But every time I looked back, there was nothing. Just the weird feeling. The whole way, I kept glancing over my shoulder, half expecting to see that massive figure looming behind me. But there was nothing. Just the usual sounds of the forest gradually coming back to life. When I got back to my car, I just sat there for a while, trying to process everything. The photos I'd taken, the footprints, that shelter, it all felt like pieces of a puzzle I couldn't quite solve. I knew I had stumbled onto something extraordinary, something most people wouldn't believe. Once I got back to civilization, the first thing I did was look up anything I could find about Sasquatch sightings in the Kootenay area. Turns out there were more than a few stories, some recent, some going way back. It was like falling down a rabbit hole, you know? Each story was different, but there were similarities. Little details that matched up with what I'd experienced. I couldn't shake the feeling that I needed to go back to find out more. But at the same time, there was this sense of, I don't know, like a warning. Like maybe some things are meant to stay hidden. Secrets that aren't ours to uncover. I showed the photos to a few people I trusted. Asked what they thought. Most figured it was a bear or some other animal. Just seen from a weird angle. But a couple of them... They looked at those pictures and went quiet, like they knew something they weren't saying. The whole experience, it changed something in me. I used to think I knew the woods, that there were no real mysteries left out there. But now, I'm not so sure. There's a part of me that wants to go back, to find that shelter again, maybe even catch a glimpse of the creature. But another part of me knows it's better to let some mysteries be. So, that's it, that's my story. Believe it or not, it's what happened to me out there in the National Park. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? What else might be out there, just beyond the light of our campfires, watching from the shadows? What do you think? Should I go back someday, try to find it again, or just leave it as one of those stories you tell around the fire? A mystery to ponder but never solve. It happened a couple of years ago during the fall in Estelle Manor Park, right here in New Jersey. I've always been a night owl and always loved how peaceful, yet kind of eerie, the park gets at night. I like walking at night, being surrounded by nature too. Estelle Manor Park in particular has been my go-to spot over the years. It was my spot to unwind after long days fixing pipes and stuff. After a day filled listening to clanging pipes and being covered in water, I really needed something to balance it out. I loved the stillness of those nights. Over the years, I'd heard about the local legends and myths, especially the one that seemed to have every second kid in the neighborhood terrified. Yep, I'm talking about the Jersey Devil. There were always stories about this creature, a real beast, they said, that haunted the woods. Kids would talk about it at campfires or whisper about it during sleepovers. I always thought those stories were just to scare us kids. Anyway, back to that fall night. I remember it was a clear night. The moon shining down brightly through the bare branches of the trees, casting long freaky shadows. All I heard was the wind in the leaves and an owl somewhere far off. I took the usual trail that snaked through the park, leading me away from the sporadic lights of the city, deeper into the heart of the woods. The air was crisp and smelled of pine and earth. It felt refreshing to walk along the dimly lit path, seeing my breath fog up a bit in front of me. As I was walking, I felt a sudden felt uneasy. Now this wasn't my first nighttime stroll. I knew what to expect, usually. A fleeting rustle as a critter scampered across fallen leaves. The occasional snap of a twig somewhere deep in the woods. These were routine, part of the charm of my midnight walks. But this time, something was off. Suddenly, it got way too quiet. It felt like even the wind stopped, and like the air was too thick or something. Then, I felt a certain sense of unease. The calm around me shattered when I saw a shadow, larger than any creature that was supposed to be in these parts. There was a certain beast-like quality to it as it looked like it was hunched over, but I wasn't really sure. I could sort of make out a large frame, 
standing what seemed like six feet tall, with a dark silhouette against the moonlight. It was too far off to really make out any details, but it didn't look or move like any animal I'd come across during my many years of night walks. It's no surprise that I couldn't shake the feeling that something bad was about to happen, but whatever it was that I was dreading, I couldn't quite put my finger on because I still didn't know if this thing was real. It was then that I heard a rustling sound, the kind of sound you'd associate with wings, but it was a deeper echoing sound making the silence feel even weirder. And with it came this strong sulfur smell that hit my nose and made me instantly tense up. I squinted into the dark, trying to make out that shadowy figure again. Suddenly, I watched as it seemed to pause and pivot so that it faced me directly. Right then, the moon came out from behind a cloud, and what I saw was so weird it still gives me chills. The creature stood tall, looking exactly as I had imagined from the haunting silhouette. But its demeanor was even more terrifying. Its head was something freaky, like a mix of a horse and some kind of goblin, with a long tongue and glowing red eyes that cut through the dark right at me. It looked kind of skeletal, with dark scaly skin that stood out in the moonlight. What I remember most distinctly, though, were its wings. The creature was undoubtedly winged. Its arms, if you can call them that, were bat-like or dragon-like, or both. I couldn't tell. I was so scared and shocked. I couldn't think straight. I knew I should run, but I just couldn't. Seeing this thing for real, something I always thought was just a story, really shook me up. It was one thing to hear about it and laugh it off, but seeing it in real life was something else. Suddenly, it let out a high-pitched shriek, snapping me out of my frozen state, and I dove into the bushes off the trail, I could barely hear anything over my heart pounding in my ears, not even its steps or the flapping. I lay in that bush for a long time, heart pounding, every nerve on edge until the night around me finally fell silent once more. When I dared to move, I slowly crept out of the underbrush, making my way back to the trail. My mind was racing a mile a minute, trying to reconcile what I had seen, but failing to find a rational explanation. The thing I'd seen fit every description of the Jersey Devil that I'd ever heard, both its physical attributes and the oppressive aura that surrounded it. The sulfur smell still hung heavy in the air, offering further confirmation to the tales. I decided to call it a night and head home, and needless to say, it was weeks before I took another nighttime stroll. Even now, I can't help but look over my shoulder a bit more often when I walk at night in the park. I don't doubt the stories about the Jersey Devil anymore. It's like something from a storybook walked right into my life. Frankly, some nights I still wonder if it was just a nightmare. But now, whenever I catch any smell of sulfur, it brings me right back to that day. And with that memory, every single horrifying second comes right back into my brain. I've always said that there's no better place to be on Halloween night than Salem, Massachusetts, with its witchcraft history and all. The streets were packed with tourists and costumes and decorations everywhere. You'd even spot a few dressed as witches, brooms and all, walking on the cobblestones. That night, I was on the local patrol team, making sure everyone stayed safe. It seemed like the right choice at the time, giving up my own Halloween hijinks to put on a badge and gear up for patrol. I grew up here in Salem. I always felt like I owed it to my hometown to keep it safe, especially on a night like Halloween. My shift started with the usual checking up on the town's major sites, making sure things didn't get too rowdy, the local trick-or-treaters being coaxed out of lingering too long by candy bowls, and occasionally nudging an over-enthusiastic party-goer into a cab. It was a cool night. The moon was hiding behind the fog, giving everything an eerie look. The flickering lanterns by the doorways were casting these long shadows that could really play tricks on your mind. A significant part of my watch included the historic sights from the witch trials. Maybe it was my childhood fascination with the gruesome tales and my affinity for horror novels. But I had a soft spot for these spots. Each of these places had its own story, like ghosts from the past which made my Halloween patrol kind of an adventure. After a quick coffee break, 
I headed towards the historic district. It was weirdly quiet, not like the busy streets I was used to. It's weird how a place that's so lively in the day can get so quiet and spooky at night. I thought nothing of it. After all, everyone was likely at the main event downtown. The area was lit by a few dim lamps that threw hazy shadows across the brick houses. In this dull light, everything appeared distorted. The decorated pumpkins seemed to grin menacingly, and the hanging witch effigies swung and creaked ominously in the chill wind. I've walked by these places a lot, but that night, something felt off. I started to feel this chill, like something wasn't right, and it kind of replaced the excitement I had earlier. It felt akin to being watched, but when I turned around, there was barely anything to see save for the dim street and old buildings. I was about to call it a night thinking I was just tired when I saw something weird out of the corner of my eye. An odd dark figure moved past an alley without making a single sound. Now, anyone else might dismiss it as a trick of the light, a play of the shadow, or perhaps a late night party goer. But this wasn't my first dance in the shadows of Salem. There was something else pulling me towards the mystery of the night. I decided to trust my gut and headed into the alley, pulling out my flashlight as I went. The alley felt creepy and quiet, except for the rustling of leaves that cut through the silence. I felt a deep dread as I walked down the brick-lined alley. The distant laughter and music of the party downtown could hardly penetrate the heavy silence that had descended upon the street. It felt like I stepped into another world, everything so tense and unsettling. If the chill night wind hadn't been briskly circling my stiff limbs, the dread alone would have triggered the hairs at the back of my neck to stand on end. I tried to tell myself I was just tired, shake off the nerves. Yet, even amidst my internal war, the inexplicable pull towards the shadowy figure was too strong to ignore. As I gradually made my way down the brooding narrow pathway, flashlight piercing the darkness, I came face to face with the figure. It was huge, with twisted horns and broad shoulders, easily twice my size. Its claws were sharp, ready for action, and under the flashlight, the heavy smell of brimstone and sulfur was almost suffocating. The figure was shrouded in darkness. The only features that stood out were its blazing eyes, two glowing orbs, vibrant in an otherworldly shade of red, stared right back at me. That was when it suddenly struck me. This was no mask. I realized with a shock that this was no costume. What I had presumed to be a partygoer in an exceptional makeup now seemed anything but human. Fear gripped me, colder than the chill in the air. The thing, this demon, growled and looked like it was about to jump at me. Frozen, my heart was pounding in my ears. It felt like an eternity before my own instincts finally screamed to run. With legs made of lead, I stumbled back onto the main path, the stench of brimstone replaced by the familiar smells of autumn. Sweat trailed down my brow, my heart hammering almost painfully against my ribs. Home was a haven, and I hold up for the rest of the night, every creak and knock making me jump. Questions upon questions spun around in my mind. What was the demon doing here? Did anybody else see it? Was I in danger? At daybreak, I mustered the courage to revisit the alley, finding nothing but the regular dumpsters and brick walls. No sulfur, no sign of anything out of the ordinary. It felt as though the whole thing was a nightmare. But the lingering smell of burned flesh on my service jacket was proof enough that it was anything but a dream. I knew Salem always had a flair for the supernatural, but this encounter, it was on a whole different level. It left me with a profound fear and a strange fascination over time. I'm still patrolling Salem, half expecting to bump into something strange again. For now though, my demon story is a hit at campfires. Just another spooky tale from Salem. A few years ago, I decided to go camping alone in West Virginia. The state is absolutely breathtaking if you ask me, or as the state's license plates say, wild and beautiful. Anyway, I chose Blackwater Falls State Park as my getaway spot. I've been into nature since my grandpa showed me how to fish and camp. For me, there's nothing like a backpacking trip to feel grounded. You know how it is. 
Sometimes you just need a break from it all. Turns out, I picked one of the best autumn weekends that year for my trip. The trees were amazing with their autumn colors, and there was something special about the cool air and the sunlight filtering through the leaves. It was really quiet, like it usually is out in those woods. The first day was spent, as most first days of camping are, setting up my campsite and learning the surrounding area. Hurrying the setup takes the fun out of it, so I took my sweet time, securing my tent, prepping my fishing gear, and gathering firewood. I had to make sure my setup was good since I was alone. Before evening, I made my way to the Blackwater River, the perfect spot to fish. The river was quiet as I spent the next few hours fishing in solitude. I would be lying if I said I wasn't a bit disappointed when the sun submerged into the horizon, before I even got a decent bite. The pending darkness was making me have to pack it all up and head back to the campsite. This day, everything felt different once the darkness started. The normal daytime sounds were gone, replaced by this deep, kind of spooky quiet. A quiet that can make the hairs at the back of your neck dance a weird little jig. To shake off the creeps about what might be out there, I heated some canned stew and distracted myself eating by the fire. As it got darker, the fire felt more and more important. The fire wasn't just for warmth. It also felt like protection against the night's creepiness. Sitting by the fire, I couldn't help but feel some fear creep up on me. Nothing really preempted the weird sensation. There was no growl or screech that ripped through the forest. There was no ominous rustling in the bush or a sudden drop in temperature. It was just a sense, an instinctual understanding of an imbalance in the environment something that hinted towards a strange presence. Being alone in the wilderness primes you for such instincts. You start perceiving things you wouldn't have noticed otherwise. The first thing I actually noticed was this weird smell, really sharp and out of place. Almost like an undefined entity was now a part of my experience. As I prepared to hit the sack, the mystery of what it could be weighed heavily. But little did I know then, the unknown had just started to stir. That night that I had hoped would be a peaceful sleep away from all my problems was anything but. My dreams were filled with a strange figure, large, ominous, and distinctly inhuman. I woke up, heart racing and covered in sweat and goosebumps. The silence was so intense, it felt eerie. Instantly I noticed random whispers faintly around me. It sounded sort of like the wind rustling through trees, but creepier. Every whisper gave me goosebumps. I was all on edge, feeling a cold dread. I'm more of a logical person, trying to find reason than latching onto the idea of spirits being present. Animals, I thought, maybe foxes or raccoons. But the rational explanation did little to stop the rising panic. Even as I tried to fight the dread creeping in, my peripheral vision caught some movement. A hulking shadow, nearly nine feet tall, that had gone unnoticed in the darkness until now. Not too deep in the woods, yet too close for comfort. I blinked, forcing my hands to maintain a grip on my flashlight. It's just a tree, a tall, weirdly shaped tree. Yeah, but my imagination was running wild. Every small sound was sending chills down my spine. The shadowy figure seemed to stick around, never completely revealing itself, yet never fully disappearing. It felt as if it was playing with my fears, taking pleasure in terrifying me. In my head, this tree-like thing turned into all kinds of horrible possibilities, making me feel sick with fear. I couldn't sleep all night, kept looking out of my tent, and that figure seemed to be always there. I huddled in the far corner of my tent, praying to just about every god I could think of, too afraid to leave the tent. As dawn finally came, whatever had been out there was now gone, and surprisingly, even to myself, I finally fell asleep. Upon waking, hours later, midday sun above me, I finally left the tent and looked around. There was still no trace of the hideous silhouette. The woods were back to being the welcoming haven I knew them to be. The whispers? Gone. The smell of decaying flesh. It was replaced by the musky smell of damp leaves and pine trees. Looking back, the whole thing kind of feels like a dream. Like it didn't really happen. But I still felt like a brave kid from town who just lived through a real-life horror movie. But deep down, I knew it was more than that. 
Eventually, I came to understood that what I saw was a Wendigo. I mostly based that on info from the stories my grandpa used to tell. I couldn't wrap my mind around it then. And now, all these years later, I know what he was talking about. Unfortunately, he's passed and I can't talk to him about it as an adult. But I really do feel that he's up there watching over me. And maybe, just maybe, that's why I'm still here today. It happened when I was working the night shift as a park patrol officer in Central Park. New York's always buzzing, but at night, Central Park's a different world. It feels like this happened to me just yesterday, though it's been years. It was a basic night patrol job, just making sure folk weren't up to anything they shouldn't be and generally maintaining peace. I often stop by the Bethesda Fountain on my rounds. During the day, it's full of life tourists, entertainers, locals. But at night, it's just the angel of the waters in the middle of an empty space. Kind of spooky, but beautiful. As I approached the Bethesda Fountain, I couldn't shake off this strange humming sensation. Hard to explain. I just figured it was the night air and kept going. That's when I saw it. It was tall, kind of looked like a person, but not really. While I was trying to make sense of what I saw, my flashlight flickered and died, and the thing turned my way. It looked like it wasn't walking, more like drifting. Sounds crazy, I know, but it gets weirder. The figure, it was translucent, a misty figure, like the residual breath on a window, but shaped like a person. I could see the fountain through it. I couldn't just turn around and leave, could I? My heart was racing, but I couldn't move. Maybe it was my training, or just how weird it all was. Either way, I stood my ground, my feet firmly planted in front of the Bethesda fountain. Then, my flashlight came back on and lit up the figure more clearly. Its features were still ambiguous being, well, not really solid, but it was as if it carried the impression of a face. Sort of human-like, but not quite. Every time the wind blew, it kind of rippled, like water. It was completely silent around me, until all of a sudden, I heard the faint sound, a whisper almost. At first, I thought it might be my radio crackling, trying to pull through some late night discussion from the station. But then, I noticed the sound was coming from the figure. It was a raspy kind of whisper. I couldn't make out what it was saying. Suddenly, I felt a chill, but weirdly, the trees didn't move. Not a single leaf moved. I rubbed my arms to bring back some heat, the whisper from the figure turning into a low hum. It's safe to say, that's one patrol night I'll never forget, not in a million years. I couldn't move. Didn't want to even blink just for the fear of missing what was about to happen next. As the figure got closer, it had this weird quiet around it, almost numbing. The whispers grew louder, the figure nearly floating as it moved, passing right through the goddamn fountain. I had to physically shake my head to believe what I was seeing. Then it turned what you might call its face towards me. It was more like a vague shape, really. I squinted, forcing my deteriorating courage to hold strong, trying to make out what it seemed to be. I remembered hearing spooky stories around campfires, but this was way scarier, making me question everything I believed. And then, as if on cue, the whispers condensed into something resembling words, words that I couldn't understand a language foreign to my senses. Yet, the sense of despair, of an anguish unreleased was evident. I found myself whispering back, too shocked to even panic. The humming got so loud that the trees seemed to shake. And then, as mysteriously as it had appeared, the figure started to dissolve, blending with the chilly night air. And then it was gone, leaving nothing but this empty echo hanging in the air. I stood there long after the figure had disappeared, in front of Bethesda Fountain, under the uncaring gaze of the Angel of the Waters. Was I losing it? Had I just imagined all this? I couldn't catch a complete thought as they spun wildly in my mind. For days I kept thinking about the cold, the whispers, and that glow. At times, I'd find myself instinctively avoiding glances at the spot the figure once stood, the feeling a cross between terror and intrigue. There were days I wanted to quit my job, to leave behind the haunting whispers of uncertainty, 
and then curiosity would pull me back. Maybe it was my duty as an officer, or just plain curiosity, but I needed to find out more. On subsequent nights, I found myself drawn towards Bethesda. There were no more spectral figures or whispering echoes. The air was normal again, and that figure just a memory, but I always felt like someone or something was watching me. I decided to change my usual route, not because I was scared but more out of respect, and gave Bethesda a wide berth. Now years have passed. I still work the night shift though. I requested for a change in my beat. The park still holds its tranquility, and Bethesda still stands majestic as ever. But to me, the memories of the spectral figure, the chilling whispers, continue to haunt. These days, I'm more careful, more open to stuff I can't explain. After all, in the dead of night, you never know what's out there. This happened on a chilly winter's night about two years back. Still can't shake it off, honestly. I was on patrol duty out in Bardstown, Kentucky. Places like home away from home, historic and peaceful. But that night, the silence was eerie. Being an officer, you get the hang of the usual sounds and rhythms. The day turning into night, all that. It was foggy, like it often is in winter, but way too quiet. It was as if the world had muted suddenly. It felt like the town itself was holding its breath, and I was just along for the ride. Patrolling the misty lanes of the historic downtown, a chill ran up my spine. Bardstown's a nice little town, with old brick buildings and cozy places that take you back. I'd walked these streets a thousand times before, but the dense fog clinging to the stoops of the antique boutiques and dimly lit bar fronts gave the town a mysterious, ghostly atmosphere. There were none of the usual night sounds, no chatter from the bars, not even dogs barking. The only sound that accompanied my footsteps was the distant hooting of an owl, a haunting lullaby to an otherwise dreamless world. Although I couldn't shake the eerie feeling, I continued my route as usual, keeping a keen eye out for any significant disturbances. In the dense fog, the buildings loomed like shadows, and the street lamps were dim through the fog. The only comfort in that chilling silence was the soft, glowing porch lights that dotted the misty streets. They were like beacons, guiding me through the fog. I remember thinking just how out of place the streetlight by Moray's bar looked, flickering in the eerie quiet of the night casting eerie shadows down the empty road. Marching through this ghost town, the unsettling feeling was a steady crescendo. I had a gut feeling that something was about to happen, and then it came. The deafening silence shattered by the bone-chilling sound of a guttural growl. It echoed through the haunting foggy night, a chilling symphony that stirred the silent town. It was a low menacing sound, like something from deep underground. It was a snarl, a low rumbling growl that seemed to seep through the fog-laden air. After that growl, there was this nasty smell, really ruined the fresh foggy air. A horrible stench hit me, like rotten eggs mixed with something burning. The smell was so bad it made me flinch. It was then I knew in my bones something was off. My grip tightened around my flashlight, the cool metal offering minimal comfort against the tear-inducing stench and the frightful sounds reverberating in my ears. I took a deep breath and pushed on into the fog, feeling a mix of fear and curiosity. My heart was racing as the mist swirled around the beam of my flashlight, the darkness beyond it a grim testament to the unknown. I heard that growl again, louder this time, making the hair on the back of my neck stand up. As I followed the growls, the unsettling sensation grew with every step, and yet I pressed on. Suddenly, it got warmer, like I was standing too close to a fire. Imagine the crackling warmth of a bonfire in the dead of winter. The smell got worse, like rotting stuff and sulfur, like something bad was coming, something I wasn't ready for. Turning towards the sudden heat, my flashlight beam cut through the fog onto a creature straight out of my worst nightmares. I'm not easily scared, but this… this was something else. It was like something out of those old ghost stories. It was a monstrous figure, rearing to a stupendous height of five feet at its shoulders. 
It moved through the fog, its dark red fur almost glowing. The beast moved strong and smooth, like it meant business. I remember its eyes, brilliant and fiery, like glowing coals in the dead of night. Those eyes were wild, promising nothing good, cutting through the fog. I froze when it looked right at me. And then, the beast opened its jaws. It opened its mouth, showing rows of sharp teeth. They glinted within the jaws, each sharp serrated point glittering with deadly precision. Look sharp enough to tear through anything, even metal. A low growl rumbled from within, a sound that echoed long in my mind and still does to this day. I can't erase the memory of that encounter, no matter how hard I try. I barely managed to escape, relying on instinct and adrenaline to get me back to that damn patrol car. I radioed in, barely able to speak, and then drove like crazy to get back to safety. But I left a piece of myself on that foggy lane, swallowed whole by the savage beast known only in folklore as the Hellhound. I barely slept that night, and when I did, I dreamt of glowing eyes and a monstrous figure emerging from the fog. The following day, I returned to that spot during daylight, a vain attempt to assure myself that it was just a figment of my imagination. The eerie silence, the spectral fog, the formidable shadow lurking within the dark, it all seemed like a surreal dream in daylight, devoid of the chilling memories of the previous night. What escalated my fear and curiosity, though, were the claw marks etched in the tarmac where the creature had materialized, the scraped and charred earth a grim testament to the reality of the previous night. I wasn't hallucinating or dreaming. I'd seen something, a creature of lore, a hellhound. The encounter shook me to my very core. Bardstown has never been the same place since that night, its charm corrupted by the memory of that nightmarish creature. Now, whenever it's foggy, I think about that night. It's like a constant reminder that there's more to this town than meets the eye. I often wonder, are we truly alone, or is the world a lot stranger than we think?